going to welcome everybody. I am Sandy Duncan, intuitive medium, and we are in for a very special episode of Behind the Scenes with the Rescue Mediums. For anyone unfamiliar, Rescue Mediums is a hit TV show that was shot from 2006 to 2011 and can still be seen in many countries around the world on YouTube and on veryparanormal.com. Mediums would visit people's homes that were disturbed by spirits and rescue them into the light. Please help me welcome four people that made this groundbreaking series possible. Edna Dargi, Director of Research, Michael Lamport, Producer, Writer, Narrator, Jackie Dennison, Rescue Medium, International Clairvoyant Medium and Psychic Artist, and Allison Wynn Ryder, Rescue Medium, International Medium, and author of the absolutely fantastic book, The Quirky Medium, The Extraordinary Adventures of an Unlikely Medium. Holy smokes, did I get that right, Allison? You did. Did I? Day. Okay. <laughs> that, that makes me sweat every time. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Sunday. As you can see, we're all in uh, some sort of Christmas finery, huh? We are. Yes. yes. And yes. Like, I said, like I said before we started, and I've said this to many, many people when we've been doing the, these episodes, yeah, because of COVID lockdown here in uh, Canada, my hair is really, really long. So I just decided to uh, uh, dye it green. <laughs> and if you believe that, I got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> you look awesome, Michael. Yeah, Thank you. You all do. You all look <laughs> fantastic. Santa's helpers, everyone. You know, and this is our, our Christmas episode and it's our little Christmas party episode. And, you know, to be extra festive, I was thinking a little bit before we got started and I just wanted to point out, you know, we get together, we do these, it's about an absolutely incredible series that you all took part in that you made for the world and you dedicated your life to doing spirit work and in particular this series and I just wanted to point out for everybody watching that it, this is a gift. This is a Christmas present because that series is still on. We can still learn from that series and how really ahead of your time all of you are. So as a, as a bit of a participant and a huge fan, um, thank you from everybody. Oh, well, thank that's you. very sweet. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. It's, um, it's an extraordinary thing that you did and Probably, um, you know, the stories you can share among yourselves and the experiences that you have are, you know, personal and special to you and that you've come here to share the, you know, the ones that we can go over uh, is a great thing. You just keep giving. So thanks. Oh, thank you. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about an episode um, that you shot one Christmas time. And I've just got my notes here. Episode five. No, nope, season five, episode 12, Mirror, Mirror. Um, and it took place in Innisfil. So just as a little reminder, um, two daughters in the family had used a Ouija board. Um, Allison oh, yeah. had commented in the episode that your face was changing in the mirror. Maybe you guys can talk about the power of mirrors. And um, grandparents helped with the rescue. You'll remember it better than I will. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was um, it was a really scary one, particularly for those girls. I think it was Sam, wasn't it, Jackie, that who saw her face changing in the mirror? Yeah, I think Sam, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, she, when she looked in the mirror, her face was changing. So she saw another young girl about the same age looking back at her, and this spirit, this was the spirit that was stuck. But this spirit, because the girls had um, used a Ouija board over and over, certainly over the past couple of years, um, the energy grew stronger and this particular spirit girl attached herself to Samantha. So her personality was changing quite a lot. And the reflection that was looking back at her through the mirror wasn't her own. It was this stuck spirit's face that was looking back at her which you drew, Jackie, do you remember? Yeah, I do, yeah. You drew her. It was mm. really haunting with a, with a hair, um, up, you know, sort of um, up in the wind and 
and we kept getting um it kept the images that we were getting was where she was running around and she was looking for i think it was her brother her little was brother and yeah. raining yeah um, and he was only five he died at the age of five but she was stuck because she was looking for this little boy right. um, and she'd come through the portal which is what can happen with mirrors it's like mm. a gateway for a spirit to move through yeah well i mean i wish i mean not I mean, I want to be serious about this because it's important, yeah. but I wish sometimes when I look in the mirror that I'd see something different than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that no, I find the, the green hair's rather fetching, Michael. <laughs> really nice. ah. yeah. <laughs> it's the festive you looking back, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There that was... episode, it was, sorry Sunday, that yeah. episode uh, was done at, um, at Christmas time. Um, there was a beautiful Christmas tree, I remember, in the yeah. lounge. Yeah. And uh, I think um, I took a photograph of you, Michael, um, it, of you. They had like a holly wreath and, um, yes. and, and you put your face through it. And that, you you yeah. dressed like that today just reminds me of that, with your face poking through this holly yes. wreath. Um, and uh, yeah, that was so funny. I think we've used that photograph quite a few times at Christmas. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? That's right. Edna, when you were interviewing the homeowners and you heard that the daughters had used a Ouija board, what did you think about that? Well, it, that became one of my uh, questions that I'd always ask early on when I'd visit the homeowners. And um, because that just opened up a whole brand new kettle of fish, because that meant that whoever needed rescuing could come from anywhere, any location, any space, any time frame. It didn't have to be connected necessarily with that home, with the land, or with the family. It's whoever came through. And so that just created another whole, okay, the job just got a lot bigger now. Yeah. Do you think, um, eh, eh, so, sorry, Sandy. No, no. Like um, Jackie and Alison and Edna, do you think that, because I know what your feelings are about the Ouija board, but like Edna is saying there, um, anybody can come through. I guess, if there is a portal that is open and you may not know who that person is. Do you think that's true? Oh, I definitely, yeah. We've experienced that, Alison, haven't we? Yeah, you know, yeah, because you, you don't know who you're dealing with. So it could connect to, it could connect to the home. It could connect to the people who live in the home, but it could be that, as in this case with um, the two girls in Innisfil, um, is that the um, the girl in spirit had connected through the Ouija board and then used the mirror as a way of trying to connect with uh, Samantha, of mm -hmm. trying to put her thoughts on to Samantha because mm -hmm. they were very alike. They were very, uh, I think they, they actually, they looked like very uh, similar personalities. And Samantha's whole personality changed and she took on the yeah. persona of the lady in spirit or the young girl in spirit who mm -hmm. was frantically looking for a baby brother. I think she she, she was sort of uh, blaming herself for this little boy going missing, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was quite traumatic. But yeah, absolutely, Michael. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, it is possible because it's happened to us. Mm. Yeah. But do you think um, w w when you say the the, uh, the spirit in the mirror, for example, um, do you think that th that's because the spirit wants to, I know this is going to sound like a really crazy question, do you think it's because the spirit wants to get out of the spirit state and come back to the corporeal existence that we have? Yeah, it depends, doesn't it? You know who the spirit is, because 
Um, in this case, I, I feel that she was looking for help. And this is why she attached herself to Samantha so that Samantha would get that help for her. They were about the same age. But what was weird was, you know, when Jackie said about her, um, Sam's personality changing, and obviously this was the influence of the attachment, it was yeah. only when we did the show and tell at the end that we also found out that Samantha had started going out for walks and didn't know why, and apparently that was really out of character for her. Yeah. So, you know, the attachment and the influence of this stuck spirit was getting stronger and stronger around this young girl. Um, the energies in that house were really strong, weren't they, Jackie? Yeah, they were. Yeah. 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 What, do you think, yeah what do you think we can tell people that are watching this as a lesson to say, like, you know, if you go out for a walk, um, be careful who you let into your mind or whatever it is, and... Uh, be careful about what spirit you come across or is that just too trite and silly but we have to be careful about who we bump into in real life mm. and in spirit life yeah i would just say don't use the ouija board <laughs> yeah so would i i would second that and then if they ground themselves if they're not using a ouija board and the grounding and aligning then that's gonna that's gonna help to protect their energy field so that will that will stop any negative energies coming in. Mm. So that that's another one to sort of reiterate about grounding and aligning. It's so oh, yeah. important. But don't use the Jack is right. Don't use a Ouija board. I would recommend that to anyone. It's not. Yeah. You see, the kids use them because they think the games. It's like an innocent, fun game, and yeah. when it's used incorrectly, it's just not. It's quite the opposite. Um, you know, and a lot of the episodes that, that we did, um, the stuck spirits were there because of a portal that's been created through people misusing Ouija boards. But yeah. I, I agree with you that Ouija boards, I mean, I, I know growing up in England, I mean, they were a source of fun. And mm. it was a game. Mm. And even if we didn't have a Ouija board, we put our fingers on the top of the old wine glass yeah and, you know you wrote the letters out and everything like That's that it. yeah and uh it be just it became in my mind at that time just a source of fun yeah and i never thought that it was opening any sort of a portal but now i completely believe it does yeah i michael i i would rather turn the wine glass the right way up and fill it with wine <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but then it won't move around the table as easily. <laughs> no, but Jackie no, no, might. Will it if you drink it. <laughs> Jackie moved on the table easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Maybe we could go down the line and one by one, Jackie raised a good point. And so did Allison. When you come in from outside, or like Michael said, going for a walk, and you've been in intense energies, like the world is sort of filled with intense energies now. What do you do to get them off you so you don't bring them into your home and spread them around to your family? Do you mean if if you've been into like a um, a property that's potentially haunted or do you mean if you've just been for a walk outside yeah, or either one either one yeah. well I mean I I mean I, I always suggest to people to sort of ground and align in the morning but then if you're if you're in an intense sort of situation for me it's I don't like crowds and I mean there's not been many crowds this year anyway, <laughs> anyway but I don't like crowds I don't like the tube you know when, I, when I'm in London I don't you know I just don't like that and I'm I just feel like my head's reeling because I'm picking up on the energies of all these people around me so I just go home have a shower because water's brilliant sort of like you know getting rid of and it's it's healing and it's cleansing getting rid of it and then I'll do my ground and aligning again and, and meditation and ask the angels to help to protect my energy. Um, and then sitting down and having a nice glass of wine after that, that helps as well. Yeah. Or a gin and tonic, one of the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. What about Edna? 
Um, I suppose that I, when I'm in an intense situation or I know there's a situation that could be a problem, um, then I'm definitely grounding and protecting. And other than that, when I'm at home, um, occasionally I'm, it's, I guess I'm reactive more than proactive. Right. If I feel that there are some energies in my home that are negative or shouldn't be there, then I'll, I'll cleanse and go through the whole house and do grounding and protection then. Wow. Okay. But, yeah. um, yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm more reactive than proactive thinking about it. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. What about you, Jackie? Um, I just say, do not disturb. Because when I'm at home, I'm at home. You know, you've got to yeah. switch off, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to doing this. I, you know, as Alison is, we do this for a living. So, um, you know, you, you leave your work at the door, so to yeah. speak. So my spirit guides, who are my doorkeepers, know that they can only allow spirit to come through to me if it's an emergency. Um, yeah. So just for example, um, I woke in uh, the middle of one night and my um, cousin, who is in spirit, was sitting on my bed and she was bouncing up and down on the bed to get my attention. So Hazel, what on earth are you doing here? You're supposed to be enjoying yourself somewhere. And you sort of think, am I dreaming or not dreaming? I wasn't, I was wide awake. And Hazel was there bouncing up and down on the bed. And she said, uh, mom's going to be okay. Okay. And gone. The next day, um, her mom, I found her mom had passed away. And she was just letting us know, really, that her mom was there in spirit and she was okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, to me, was a situation where they allowed someone to come through. But if I was just out walking or going into a building that I knew, that you know it's like staying in a hotel overnight you've not stayed there before and you sort of think oh gosh yeah i can feel me spider senses are going a bit here i can feel it <laughs> um and so but i said again do, do not allow anyone to come through unless it's absolutely necessary so yeah, yeah. grounding alignment just like allison said and uh, yeah. working with spirit guides to say keep that spiritual door shut Absolutely. And the Reiki symbols are perfect as well for that. Mm. Like Jackie's just raised in a brilliant um, thing about, you know, when you're staying in hotels. Yeah. And like, you know, when we stayed in the suites, our, our respective suites in Toronto, yeah. when we were doing, so I'd, I'd, I'd light some candles and I'd do the Reiki symbols around and, um, you know, sort of bless the room. So things like that. But if I'm, if I'm coming back into my own home, Jackie's right that you leave it at the door because it's like, you know, you have to be able to switch it off. You know, we have to, and our spirit guides know that we have to have our time, our downtime, because the rest of the time, obviously, we're working with spirit and higher energies and, and our, our wonderful guides and helpers, of course. Yeah. And Michael, what do you do? Um, what do I do, like, in what regard? To get any sort of foreign energy away from you if you've been out so you don't oh in. um i sort of go to the pub <laughs> <laughs> that, doesn't, that, that doesn't always work <laughs> go to the pub and the you know the guy sitting at the end of the bar is uh, like your spirit guide and he's sort of like nah you don't want to drink that drink this um <laughs> No, but I, I, I try to, uh, I try to ground myself and I listen to what Jackie and Allison have said to me about how to, uh, ground yourself. And I find it sometimes very difficult. Mm. And, um, I mean, I've known Edna for many, many years and, uh, I, I know that sounds awful. <laughs> but, um, I uh, I believe what she says and she's a very grounded person mm. and I'd like to be like that and I'm, I find it hard yeah yeah that makes sense thank you thank you um, so can we talk about some I know we don't have snow here in Canada I'm sure there's not snow where anybody is right now, but um, can we talk about some of your snowy arrivals and mm -hmm. 
rescue meetings because you had some really, really good ones. Um, the first one that comes to mind uh, <laughs> is season seven, episode five, Weakening the Ouija. So there we go again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you were, you were sledding down a snowy hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you, but you don't know that till you get there, correct? Uh, no. <laughs> no, we, we don't know what the arrival is going to be. We never know, do we, Jackie? No, not at all. No. That's you know, I close area. The, the fact that um, they try, Michael, when Michael's uh, working out what the arrival uh, or the cheers is, uh, is going to be, uh, you take into account the area, Michael, don't you? Or what's there? So on, on that occasion, because there was snow and there was a hill, it, it seems as though a sled would be the best thing, Michael. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you've got to take into account, like you said, Jackie, uh, what's available. Mm -hmm. I mean, that goes back to our discussion, I think, earlier about, like, you know, the lobster boat in Nova Scotia. Mm. Yeah. It's sort yeah. of like, uh, how do you arrive in Nova Scotia? Well, by a lobster boat. Yeah, in the middle of winter. And sliding all over the deck, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> no, but, but, but you're absolutely right. We, we are um, not conditioned. Uh, we are restrained by uh, what we can have uh, as an arrival or anything like that in the area that we are in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... We, we, we try to pick the best things that are funny yeah. and cute and all that sort of stuff. That, that was was funny and wet. Because I, I remember with that one, I don't know about you, do you remember we were wet because we kept falling off them. And we were <laughs> laughing and giggling and we were wet through. And this is, of course, the arrival is done before of uh, everything else sort of, you know, during the day. Um, so we were just wet through and we had to meet the homeowners, didn't we? Yeah. So um, I th we had to be dried off with hair dryers because right. our clothes were so wet through. Because obviously we couldn't be seen walking around like wet through. I mean, we'd have got a, you know, we'd have got a like really bad cold anyway. But we couldn't have sat down on their settees with wet through it, clothes. It was like, good fun. Uh, that one really was good fun because they were, I've not, I've not been on a sledge since I was a child and yeah. and getting on those sledges and then pushing ourselves down yeah. the hill and I think we both ended up falling off and I we went did. round and round and round and round and, and there's yeah. photographs of us just lying there laughing yeah. um, <laughs> that was so fun I'll tell you what else I remember about that was um I think it was Stefan um yeah. was was on the sledge he went on the sledge with the camera and then got somebody to push him down so he could get yes. from the camera's point of view. That's it, I yeah. remember. Because they're yeah. so meticulous, aren't they, with everything. Yeah. Our, our crew are so brilliant. Definitely. Um, and yeah, yeah that, that was, that was it was good fun, but we did get wet through. <laughs> yeah, that brought out our inner children, didn't it? <laughs> it did, our inner child. Edna, did but you know about true. that, Edna? When you talk about somebody like uh, Stefan, yeah, um, for for people that don't know, is is one of our cinematographers. Um, he really immerses himself, mm. like literally, in stuff, and he has no fear, <laughs> it doesn't and he is amazing, <laughs> and he's a nice guy. He's a lovely guy. <laughs> They're all fab. The whole crew were just amazing. Yeah. Edna, were, were you aware of, uh, when we did the sledges, were, were you aware of that's how we were going to arrive? No, I, I usually had no knowledge either. <laughs> well, I was thinking of anything else. Yeah. But what's interesting was, um, I know, Alison, you said you had to hair dry off. Well, usually the arrival was filmed on the second day. It wasn't when they actually arrived. So the continuity was important because you had to wear and be exactly as you were mm. in mm. one meeting the homeowners. Mm. So it was filmed on a, in a little space after yeah. 
mm. not the actual order of when things happen. Yeah. Mm. I can't remember the order, but I just specifically remember us being wet through and having to be hair dried off. Yeah. I just remember that with that one. Yeah. Because yeah. it had well, been well, a that otherwise, made it? about TV and film, mm. as Edna says, is that, uh, you know, like what order does this happen in? Mm. Because the editor puts it together. So, you know, it could be like this, that, blah, blah, blah. And then the editor puts it together and, and, and makes it a show. Mm. And I think that's part of the magic of uh, TV and film. Yeah. And I also think it's maybe part of the downfall mm. because I think it's really cool to just uh, do stuff as it happens, yeah. as we do with you guys yeah. um, on Rescue Mediums. Um, when when you start, when you connect with the spirit, we don't do any cut. Can we do this again? Cut. No, no, no. It's we live. Do it it? You. Mm. Straight through, straight mm. through. So the bits of swearing and everything and expletives are kept in for, most, for the most part. <laughs> it's real, isn't it? It is real. Yeah, yeah, very real. I like how your spirit guides didn't tell you how you were going to arrive. <laughs> we like surprises. What can we yeah. say? Yeah. They must have a good sense of ha-ha because well, you yeah. get premonitions about the work. Yeah. yeah. About the arrival. They're in on it. They're in on it. Well, do you and know they, what, they though? Good. They do. Yeah. They do sometimes. They do. They do give us premonitions sometimes about how we, but we don't know uh, that that's a, So they could have given, uh, they, they could have said something like snowshoes uh, to us. And, you know, we're thinking that snowshoes are just a part of, we're going to see them when we yeah. get to the place. And then yeah. we've done an arrival. We've done two arrivals, I think, with snowshoes, haven't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we yeah. won't necessarily know whether it's the arrival, but it'll come in somehow. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. But I, were, I mean, because obviously Jackie and I never know where we're going to. And when I said, um, you know, our spirit guides are in on it, I very much mean that. They, they obviously go and have a look round where we're going. And then obviously when we're linking in with them to do the premonitions and we're listening to what they're giving us or we're doing their psychic art, um, they're definitely in the know because they've already been and, and checked it out. It's And, you oh. know, even now, I, I'm just, I mean, aren't they just amazing? Yeah. I, you know, I just, they never fail to amaze me ever. Spirit, you know, our spirit yes. teams, are, you know, just amazing, aren't they? Absolutely. No, I agree, but your uh, your your guys' angels, and um, I'm not putting them down by saying this, but I think I talk to them too, and I say to them, Shh, "Don't talk <laughs> back to <here>, Addison," <laughs> and they go, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember one um, episode, it wasn't an episode with you, Alison, it was one with Christine, and I can't remember where, I think it was St Mary's, um, Edna might be able to put me straight on this, um, <clears throat> we ended up doing snow angels on the ground, and I, mm -hmm. I threw Fantastic. myself backwards on the ground, That's but the, right. ground, the ground was hard, <laughs> <laughs> and I gave myself such a bump on the head. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it was so, it was funny, it really was funny, I mean, the snow there came, we, we were staying in a, a motel, or we were staying somewhere, and get, gets up the next morning, and there is the snow halfway up the windows, I've never <laughs> seen snow appear like that so quickly, you know, we had to have a snow flower thing to get us out, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do, you, do, you, um, do you remember that one, Edna? Yeah, it was the very first uh, snowfall of the year. It was the end of November. Mm. And St. Mary's is right in a snow belt mm. in Ontario. So they do get the heavy storms. Yeah. And I think that was the first snow you'd ever experienced really in Canada. Yeah. And so throughout, you wanted to try that snow angel. No, that's the spot you picked 
was very, the snow was not deep enough. No. <laughs> oh, no. Back. But they kind of went and plunked into it and, and that didn't work very well. <laughs> it was also, I think when we left there, it was the worst, one of the worst snowstorms I've ever driven through. It was quite- Oh, it was awful. awful. Because we bad. drove back. I remember driving with um, Jackie and uh, I could not see- That's yeah. right. I literally, and this is gonna sound like an exaggeration, Mm -hmm. I couldn't see six inches mm -hmm. in front of my, uh, the hood of my car. Mm -hmm. So I had to periodically open the door and peer out and look. It was so terrifying. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Was. So the weather was the scary part, not, not the spirit rescue. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Wow. I wish we could have said to the to the angels, like sort of, okay, can you make this stop now, just for a bit, just till we get home? You can bring it back in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that. <laughs> when you're talking about snowshoes, um, yeah. you had an arrival in Oshawa, season seven, episode nine, Ghostly Passage, um, and you arrived by snowshoe through a field. It looked hard because you had like longer coats on and I don't have much snowshoe experience, but it looked like it was tough. We, it was we hilarious, had, but scary it, at the same was, time. Was, yeah. We had no yeah. snowshoe experience whatsoever. No, no. <laughs> but they, no. Uh, they taught us how to use them because yes. there is a particular way of you. You've got to put your foot, your foot well, actually flat down to, to move it. Um, otherwise, you... <laughs> with your, your legs all over everywhere yeah. they are quite difficult to use but once you get the hang of it you know yeah. you go wading through you're all right yeah. but the, the, the um, other snowshoes we had were completely different we had some really old ones that we used and then we had a more modern uh, set that we used and they were different they were different how you use yeah. them you have to get like a momentum going but i remember yeah. they kept getting knotted up together <laughs> and then obviously you fall flat on your face then you know, yeah. but once we got used to it, I mean, we, I just remember us laughing at that. Yeah. But I was thinking, oh, let us get there because, you know, I was thinking, oh, God, I mean, it's quite, it is quite scary, but fun as well. You know, yeah. you know, every, well, every well, 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 what they see here about that is just as you said, Jackie and Alison, um, that's snow, that's snowshoe. <laughs> that's tennis racket. <laughs> well you did it twice you did it twice your arrival by snowshoe yeah the yeah. other one was season five episode 11 a bad omen that was in barry oh again you were coming along a field um with well, yeah. on. what i find funny about that when i look back over some of the photographs um of us with the snowshoes as you say uh sandy we're in the middle of this field that's covered yeah. in snow and yeah. this is that we're like two dots there with yeah with the snowshoes on and carrying handbags. I mean, how British can you get? <laughs> yeah, because I had like a big blue handbag, yeah. like a new blue handbag. I was clinging onto it like dear life and trying to walk <laughs> these things. Oh, oh my God. And then we had like snow bubbles on us, didn't we? Yeah. You know, where the snow st sticks and you fall. And yeah. I can't remember if that was when we were whizzing down the hill or whether that was on the snowshoes. But you know, like you know, like when dogs go out in the snow and they come back with like Klingons on, like balls yeah. on the fur. Yeah. Yeah. We have them stuck to the coat. We did. Over there. <laughs> uh, oh, so much fun! You know, really, really was, and so authentic as well. You know, because obviously the snow and um, you know it's very seasonal. Loved it. Yeah. Did anyone ever say no? I'm not doing that. Well, to any of the <clears throat> yeah, if they said arriving. you're going to do, you're going to go on a sled, or you're going to go yeah. on a snowshoe, or did anyone ever say I'm not doing that? Uh, to Michael, yeah. we, you're we just, to Michael, are you? We yeah. we just got on with it. I think <laughs> we did. We just got on with it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, they talk about trust, Michael. They trust you <laughs> implicitly. The, the only thing that I know that we've ever said to Michael is, "Don't put us on push bikes." Uh, oh, just don't even. That's because of me. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you had my headphones. You turned up with the bicycle, Michael. And I yeah. thought, oh, no. And I thought, how am I going to say uh, I've never ridden a bike. I've had a, a bike as a child, so I've never been able to ride one. Mm -hmm. And it never really even entered my head that, you know, there'd be a bicycle arrival. But obviously, why not? So then I can't <laughs> no, remember I what you did. I think you had us lost in a, in a wood in or a something wood. as an yeah. arrival instead, didn't yeah. you? I yeah. felt no, awful I, I, that. I, I, rem I, I remember that because both of you, didn't want to ride yeah. uh, and I was thinking oh shit yeah. what are we gonna do then <laughs> if it had been a tandem we'd have been okay Jackie one way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you ride tandem <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's the only one we've ever said no to yeah it is yeah that's a that's a lot of trust oh my goodness yeah, yeah. we'll do it yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just so much fun, you know. <clears throat> and we we get excited because obviously we didn't know what the arrivals were going to be, and it's just like you know there is that excitement and that fun there, mm. and uh, you know just re enjoyed every single one, and every single one links in with where we are or or what's going on yeah. in the property, you know. Yeah, which is why it looks so good, I think, um, in the series that your arrival, like you just said, Alison, sticks you in the place that you're going to yeah. and uh, sort of frames the thing in a way. And uh, yeah, and I, I, yeah, I, I think the arrival is a very important part of the show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and the chairs even more. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Now that one, the one that we were talking about, Mirror Mirror, the chairs with that, and I went, I remember going, oh God, you know, the joke at the end, because yeah. you said something about, because um, obviously it was a portal that we were dealing with, the, with the mirrors, and you said, mm. Jackie, in the joke, something about, you know, what's the best portal? And I said, no, what's the best portal, Jackie? And you said, the best portal is a small portal. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it was something like that. And I said, what do you mean? You said a small glass of port. port yeah. And that's what we were having the cheers with. Yeah. We did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of my my favourite tipples that my nana used to love was the glass yeah. of port. Yeah. Port. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love port as well. I have sherry with me today, not port, but still it's still very festive, isn't it? It certainly is. It Spanish certainly is. sherry. Spanish sherry. It's Jerez. From Jerez, yes, I've been That's to. You say Sherry in yeah. Spanish, yeah. Uh, I had to work that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew what we were buying, you know. <laughs> we'll have to have subtitles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we have our cheers, Jackie? Yes, yeah. let's have our cheers, yeah. Sunday. Why not? Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you very much. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry you Christmas. Thank you guys, too. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, Thanks everyone. Everybody. Cheers, Edna. Cheers. Cheers, Edna. Cheers. Thanks, Sunday. Thank you. Cheers, Sunday. Cheers.